So hello fellow coin collectors, this is Glenn back with another video and in today's video well we're going to talk about how to look for value in coin lots. So for this I have purchased three coin lots, so I've purchased coins from Finland, Hong Kong and the Netherlands and the price range for the Finnish coins was $23, for the Hong Kong coins was 35 and for the Dutch ones was 45 so because I spent that much money on these coins when you resell them you need to know if you can get that value back or even a bit more so like if you sell on eBay if you want to sell this and get your money back uh, you need to sell it for more than $45. If you sell it for $45, you're going to lose money uh, because eBay takes roughly about 13%. So you need to sell it for uh, probably $55 just to make your money back. So let's go through each of these coin sets to see what uh, is a good value. Okay, so here I have the finished coins and for these types of buying and selling you need to know what you're looking for uh, If you look at a coin lot, so you look at this coin lot and you go hmm What can I find that could increase the value of what I am selling? So you can go to Numista, you can look up each of these coins and you look at the minty triggers and generally the low mintage ones would be the ones that you're after so here we have coins from the 20s to the 40s these are the coins that Finland used uh, this one's 1917 in the independence coin these ones were used in the 50s and in the 60s and 70s they used these coins so none of these uh, are current coins because they use the euro coins but, and a, a lot of them are high mint like all these coins were high mint except for this one the five marker from 1973 this one had a mintage of three million so it is the lowest minted coin of this lot uh, but being three million uh, it's not really going to get much value so I believe this one probably costs about five dollars because it's in high grade if it was in lower grade it'll probably cost less now the rest of the coins here uh, you probably get five dollars maximum for all of them uh, the 1971 and the 1977 i believe a high mint i believe this one is like five million minted so but that is an average mintage for these coins. These ones have tens of millions, so they're really not low mint. Same as these coins, even though they're older, they've got marker, uh, tens of millions. Then we have an iron coin. So this one is in less grade because iron doesn't actually keep well. It goes this black color. It's 1943, uh, first year of just the pure iron coins and not really worth that much then this is a copper nickel coin from 1940 this is a low mint coin but it's in uh, pretty the actual wear on it well i would say is almost uncirculated but because it's got all spots it does take away from the actual coin itself oh i'm sorry this is not copper nickel this is a nickel plated steel uh, so iron is coming through, but the two coins I wanted was this one. This one I actually wanted for my collection because so I don't have one, and that is a 1939. But these two are low mint coins. So if you look at the actual, this coin is probably almost uncirculated grey, probably EF to almost uncirculated. High points seem to be worn, worn down, and. It does have some discoloration, but that's probably dirt. So this one has a mintage of 752,000. And that is uh, probably the mid-range mint for these coins. The lowest 
is 470,000 for 1936. And the highest is one uh, 3 million for 1931. So this coin probably costs $5 in itself in this grade. Uh, probably 5 to 10 I'd say. But the piece de la resistance is this coin here. It's in lower grade. I would say probably EF and this is 1931 has a mintage of 81,000 so 81,000 is quite low and in this condition you'd probably be paying $20 so these two coins here if you were to sell it you get at least 20 to $30 for them so that is uh, pretty much gonna give your money back as well as the other coins you can probably get another 10 to 15 dollars and then we have this coin here which is a 1917 and that's not a mint error this has no mint figures but it is an independence coin uh, in this condition it's only worth uh, a few dollars probably two or three at most uh, but the grade it's not really worn it's if it didn't have the damage on the side it will probably be extremely fine and the patina is what the coin uh, develops and it's starting to corrode as well so all up you pay $23 and you're probably going to make $40 back so that is a good pickup for the Finland coins then we have the coins from Hong Kong so this one's cost $35 uh, we have 1949 with King George VI on it. So these are only three coins of 5, 10, and 50 cent. Uh, these ones you probably get four or five dollars from. Then we have the Elizabeth II. These ones have security reading. So they have the dots and reading on the side. So that's from the 60s. Uh, that's probably probably five to ten dollars there. I'll say five dollars. So four five and here we have coins from the 70s these ones just have milling so they don't have any of the security reading if we look at both coins you can see the differences so security reading and just reading uh, these ones are pretty low value probably five dollars for those well because they're in pretty good condition so all up for that probably i'd say fifteen dollars then we have these coins these are the reformed coins that you started issuing in 1975 and they're all in pretty good condition uh, this 50 cent is yeah pretty not really that good uh, then we have an 86 in good condition this 87 is in pretty good condition uh, so for these coins so the 1976 is between uh, five and ten dollars i would say about eight so that goes with that so that's 23 and these ones probably uh, probably i would say eight dollars as well so there is 16 so we've got 15 and 16 so that's 31 so far that's just my guesstimate okay uh varieties and values of coins Pretty much vary depending on the time period and who's selling them and how much they actually want to sell it for. Then we have the earlier coins from Hong Kong. So we have a one cent from 1904. Uh, that's probably in fine condition. I would say probably five dollars for that. Then we have another smaller 1933 one cent coin. Uh, these ones I've sold for five dollars, so I know they do sell for that price. So that's ten dollars. Then we have silver coins. Well, some of them are anyway. Nine and four. Yeah, probably a uh, pretty poor grade. So that one is fine condition. Yeah, I'd say probably ten dollars for that one. Then we have an eighteen eighty five. So these ones are in pretty good condition except for I'm not too sure what that black stuff is there and they do research it 
But if it wasn't for that, you get about fifteen dollars for it. So, and then we have a nineteen hundred ten cent coin silver. This one, although it's a little bit discolored, is uh, probably very fine condition, and I would say oh, probably fifteen dollars for that as well. So here we have fifteen, fifteen, uh, twenty five. 35 then you got these two coins these are probably five dollars each so 45 so in that lot uh, my guesstimate price is uh, 76 dollars from 30 uh, 45 should i say no 35 dollars 76 dollars from 35 sorry getting confused with the dutch coins so there's a good pickup Ah, uh, but these two I don't open my collection, so they're going into the collection. Uh, so that is what you can look find. So then we have the Dutch coins, so I paid $45 for these. Uh, then we've got these ones. Uh, this commemorative, pretty high mint, but these are in pretty good grades. I would say uh, 5 or $6 for that, just say 5 Then we have the last issue uh, these are all in pretty good condition and is that that kind? no the 25 cent I believe is a proof coin it's got frosting on the effigy so this come out of a proof set 2000 uh, the rest of the coins are all just general issue and Pretty high mintage coins. So that one's probably gonna be about I would say seven dollars, eight dollars. So we have uh, five and seven, twelve dollars, and then we have general issue from 1950s to the 80s. The lowest mint coin is this 1978 with uh, five million. The two and a half golden really only become a standard coin in the 70s between the end of the Second World War and the 1970s. Uh, these coins weren't really, they weren't in circulation. They started minting them in the 60s again. In the 50s, they didn't have these coins. So the coinage has changed, and a lot of these are. Pretty nice value. I would say $5 for that lot. So that brings it up to $17. And then we have Avacoins. So we have this lot from 1948. So these coins are pretty standard, high mint coins. I would say $5 for that lot. Then we have World War II coins. Uh, they sell for a few dollars each. But you can see the pretty low grade. I would say ten dollars for that. You can check all these values on eBay. So we've got fifteen for those. Then we have the earlier coins. So these are the half cent. And these ones, this one's in pretty poor condition. 1894. Then we have 1936. I have not checked the price of the 1894, 1936. But the good thing about these is that we have a key date. And then there's the 1924 coin. These ones themselves cost between 30 or 40 dollars. This is probably in very fine condition, almost uncirculated. Uh, this one has a mintage of, I think, about one half million, but it's classed as a key date because it's the lowest minted and very hard to get for reasonable price. So that is $30, that coin itself. So $30. This one, yeah, probably $5 in that condition, 901, 5 million, uh, still low mintage for a one cent coin. But, you know, it's not that hard to get. These two 
I would say, oops, drop the coin. Where did I drop it? Okay, it's so a half cent, the smallest coin, but you know, not very hard to get. 1936, this is almost uncirculated. So I'd say probably ten dollars for the lot. And then we have a two and a half cent, and this one is from 1880. So I would say ten dollars for that coin. It looks very fine condition. It does have wear on the crown, on the top of the lion, on this lion's hand, as well as there. Background doesn't seem to have that much wear on it, because it's protected by the dots in the line. And on here, there's uh, wear on the actual leaves. So that one, I would say probably uh, $10 for that coin. But then we have this Tengulazan. So this is 1973. has a silver value of $18.30. Uh, but they sell between thirty and forty dollars, so thirty dollars for that one. So that is basically the reason why I purchased this coin lot. But not only that, we have got coins from Dutch East Indies. I would say most of these are around about five dollars each. Uh, probably, yeah, five dollars each. I would say. But as a lot, you probably will get less value. Then we have the two silver coins, and these ones are in pretty high condition. So these ones are pretty much uncirculated. So we've got 1920 and 1941. They're not low mint coins, they're pretty high mint coins. Uh, it's $15 for both of those. And as a group, I would say this one's probably $15 as well. So that is 30. And then we have a Dutch coin, but it was only issued in Curacao and Suriname in 1943, five cent. And they sell for five cents each. And then we have a 10 cent from the Netherlands Antilles 1954. Uh, they also sell for about $10 each. Then we have a Dutch East Indies, so this is an Indonesian coin, VAC. And this one was issued for Holland, the coat of arms. And these sell for $10 each. It's in okay condition. And then we have two tokens. So these are tokens used by, uh, upside down, SMN Shipping Company. They were used for cruises in the 70s to the 60s because in 1947 uh, it was illegal to export or import Dutch currency so they couldn't use the Dutch currency on the ships because that would be classed as exporting it. So they used these tokens so you could change your Dutch currency to these tokens and you can use it to spend it on the ships. So these ones were kept as souvenirs by someone I can't remember the mintage, 45 cents. The 25 cents, this aluminium, has a mintage of 100,000. And I don't know what the value of these tokens are. I would say probably 10 to $20. Now, I'm just going to say 15 for both. Uh, but that I'll need to investigate further. But I didn't actually get these two tokens to sell. I'm just very curious about the history of that shipping route. So all in all, for $23 uh, for the Finnish coins, uh, you could potentially sell them for $70. For the Hong Kong coins, buy them for $35, but you can potentially sell them for $76. For the Dutch coins, you buy them for $45, but there's a potential sell value of $170 or $197, should I say. So this Dutch, you can sell it for four times the amount. The other two, you can sell the Hong Kong coins for double and triple 40 Finnish coins. So basically, that is how you buy and sell coins 
on the internet. I hope this helps you. Uh, it's a pretty long video because I had to explain each of these coins in their monetary value. And thank you for watching. Have an awesome coin and banknote collecting time. Thank you and goodbye.